RisaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for the full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the seismic load generator functionality in RisaCalc. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and click Add Component and choose Seismic Generator. Before we go ahead and do anything else, I'm going to go ahead up to our settings here and scroll down and see our options. So we have options for using the ASC 716 or ASC 710 code. Next, if we start by looking at our general details, we can see that we have two seismic methods available to us, either the equivalent lateral force method, which would be used for building structures, or non-structural component, which we'll look at a bit later. Next, we can go ahead and set our risk category as well as our basic structure type. We can also go ahead and define our seismic system factors either manually or uh, by using table 12.2-1 to calculate our R value, our omega, and then our CD value. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and click this button to open our dialog. And then I can scroll through and choose uh, whatever type of seismic force resisting system I want. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this steel intermediate moment frame and click done. And those values are automatically updated. Next, I can go ahead and select the drift structure type that I want. In this case, we're going to go ahead and uh, choose this from table 12.12-1, which would allow us to calculate the allowable drift limit at each level based on the structure type. So in this case, I'm going to keep this first one as our choice. Next, I want to go ahead to our structure weights. In this case, we go ahead and add in the individual levels as well as the level weights. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna disable the option to generate diaphragm forces. So these diaphragm forces, if we wanted to keep them on, are designed in accordance with ASC 7 equation 12.10-1. And really this equation gives us an approximation of the response acceleration at each level of the diaphragm multiplied by that distributed mass. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. And we can just start to define our levels. So floor one, in this case, I'm going to have as a weight of 175 kips. Next, I'll add a second line, 24 feet for that level. And the weight in this particular case, we'll say is 140 kips. Click to add another level. Again, we'll keep this dimension at 36 feet, so 12 feet between those levels. And add this level as 105 kips. And then finally, our last level, we'll make this our roof. And we'll go ahead and make that roof weight 80 kips. Now all the values have been updating here in the graphics so you can see exactly what is going on with this particular structure. Now before we go ahead and look at results, we need to go ahead and look at site-specific details. So in this case, based on that ASC 716, our risk category is the same as we defined in our general details. We can also go ahead and set our site class, so I'm just going to keep this as site class D. Next we can go ahead and calculate the spectral response accelerations based on the location of the project. And this is done either by inputting those manually, or in this case, we actually have an API that works directly with the USGS uh, maps. And so we can go ahead and enter a zip code or coordinates or uh, just a uh, full address. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and enter in a zip code for uh, a location near Las Vegas. Click go to calculate those SDS, SD1, and S1 values. We can also go ahead and look at how we want to calculate the approximate fundamental period. And so in this case, we're just going to go ahead and keep that natural period calculated based on table 12.8-2. And with that, we can go ahead and look at our detailed report. And so if I go ahead and expand this detailed report, we can see all of our properties as they've been calculated, our spectral parameters that we defined, the calculated parameters for the period, and then our overall force results. And then in addition, we also see our story force distribution. So we can see our each level, the height of the level, the weight at each level, and then the distribution as well as the force that goes along that. And finally, the uh, upper drift limit there. And so we can see all of those as calculated per their equations from ASC 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And back on our general details tab, I'm going to go ahead and switch our seismic method to non-structural component. So in this case, we're going to calculate the seismic information for a non-structural component. And so in this case, uh, we can set that component importance factor, 
And then we can go ahead and start to define the seismic system factors. In this case, again, just like we did for the equivalent lateral force procedure, I'm gonna go ahead and open the database. And we can see all our options here. I'm gonna actually scroll down until I find signs and billboards. So I'm gonna be calculating maybe the, so the, the seismic properties for a sign that are hanging off the side of the building. I'll click done there to see those values updated. Next, I can go to structure weights. In this case, we have to first define the height of the attachment point. So the attachment point for whatever it is, in this case, a sign. So I'll say maybe that is 25 feet. Next, we can calculate the average root height. So in this case, let's say it's 30 feet. And then the sign weight in this case, let's go ahead and call that 125 kips. Finally, if we go ahead and look at the site-specific details, again, that risk category is defined here as well as the site class. We can change the address or keep the address the same. And then it's just calculating that SDS factor from that address. And then if we go look at our detailed report, Again, we can see the basics of our detailed report here, much simpler in this particular case, but we see the force results as calculated here. So that FP force from equation 13.1-3, our FP max and our FP min. And if we want, we can go ahead and download this just like we can any calculation in RESA Calc and include this in our calculation book. To learn more about RESA Calc, including information about additional functionality as well as pricing, please visit resa.com.